Hey everyone, Redux of Valor Ridge. The purpose of this video is to talk about the coming arming of America. And this is a very good thing, and I'm predicting great stuff for next year. Let's go ahead and get started. If you followed the trends of the last couple years, and especially the last 35, 40 years in this country when it comes to people arming themselves up and carrying concealed or open carry with a handgun, you'll notice that the trend is always moving towards uh, more and more people getting involved with this. This is a good thing. And we've talked about the Supreme Court case coming up uh, next year. And we've talked about the Supreme Court case that's coming up in the spring that they've already heard, but they're going to issue a ruling on. Now let me premise this entire video by saying this, that the federal government does not have the authority to tell you if, how, and when you can defend yourself. No state government has that authority. The, in the United States, our ability to carry a firearm of our choice and our ability to use that firearm when our lives are threatened, that is a gift given to us by the creator of heaven and earth. That is my entire belief system on this. I do not believe that that federal government or state government or anything else is the ultimate authority when it comes to that. I encourage people to carry firearms anywhere they can and choose to do so. All right, so that is what I believe. I believe the federal government's completely out of control. I think they're massive. If I was president for a day, I'd strip away 99% of it, okay? But that said, I'm simply doing this video as a way to show you what I believe that the Supreme Court is going to do. As of the time of this video, which is November of 2021, we've got 21 states that are permitless carry, which means open and concealed without having to pay for the privilege of doing so. Um, that's 21 states out of, out of 50. We've got 22 probably coming up with Alabama. They'll be the next ones to do this. So you're talking 22 states that you can carry open or concealed without a permit at all. 27 states you can carry open without a permit, period. So that's over half the country. And all these, these people that are just clamoring for gun control over and over again, they're, they're either mentally truncated or they're just delusional and refuse to look at the data. They refuse to look at any facts or evidence, which is very, very obvious when it comes to leftists. That's all they know how to do is not look at facts and evidence. They feel rather than know. So this is what I believe the Supreme Court is going to do. The issue, of course, is carrying a firearm outside of the home. I mean, the Second Amendment is the right to keep and bear arms. You know, keep means to have or possess. Bear means to carry upon one's person. So that means outside the home. And I want you to ask yourself a series of questions here. Number one, what other right in the Bill of Rights requires that you pay to exercise that right, to pay money. Well, let's see here, it's already been struck down when it comes to voting that a poll tax was unconstitutional. Uh, it's, it's already been determined that you don't have to pay for free speech, that you don't have to do that. What other right starts and stops in a checkerboard fashion depending on what state that you go to? No other right, you have the right to free speech in any state. You don't have to stop having free speech if you go from one state to the other. You don't have to pay for that. You don't have to get a permit for any of that stuff. So the Second Amendment's been treated extremely poorly by the courts or just unaddressed period over the last several decades. Our right to self-protection is universal. It is a natural right. It is a gift endowed by us from our Creator. And it, we do not get deprived of our right to protect ourselves and our family and our communities when we go from one border to the next. That's an insane position to take, to say, oh, well, you got the right to do it, but you can only do it in a certain, uh, in a certain state. No, that is not the intent. Uh, the Second Amendment is about internal security. The Second Amendment is about protecting our nation, not only from internal threats from criminals, it's also designed to pr protect us from tyranny from a federal government. So being that it says being necessary to the security of a free state, that would mean security from not only violent criminals, that also means security from tyranny at government. So when we arm ourselves and we go out into our daily lives and carry our firearms, we are making this country safer. Concealed carriers, open carriers, we make this country a safer place. We protect others from violent criminals. We protect ourselves from violent criminals. So that is 
consistent with what the Second Amendment says. And that doesn't have to be a long gun, everybody. A pistol is a modern weapon that is easily concealable, easily usable, and, and is certainly the weapon of choice for people that go out and do daily lives where they live, whether it's in a city or whether it's in a rural community. It's a great choice for that. So when we're talking about making the country safer, more concealed carriers make this country a safer place. More people that carry guns openly make this country a safer place. So when it comes to the Supreme Court decision, I, I'm going to predict something right now. I'll, I'll, I'll give you two things at a minimum that I believe that they're going to rule on. And not that I said, like I said, guys, not that they're the ultimate authority, not regardless of what the decision is. It's not going to change the way I live my life carrying a firearm. It shouldn't change the way that you do it either. So regardless of how they rule, whether it's in, or in favor of the Second Amendment or against the Second Amendment, that doesn't change the fact that our founders wanted an armed populace. They wanted people to carry firearms for not only personal defense, but defense of their community against violent criminals in and out of uniform. That said, what I believe is going to happen at a minimum is I believe that, that the Supreme Court will rule that it will have to be a shall issue uh, permit or whatever it is in any state. It will have to be a shall issue. In other words, the government cannot prevent you from doing that. No more having to justify and articulate why you need to carry a firearm like you do in, in New Jersey or Massachusetts or Hawaii or any other anti-American state government there. Uh, I believe it will be absolutely ruled by the Supreme Court that it will be shall issue and I also believe that they're going to waive any of the fees that you have to pay to exercise that. I believe that they will strike down any kind of fees that the state imposes on that. For example, whether it's $80 or $100 or $300 or whatever it is that states have been charging, uh, which is outrageous given that no one should ever have to pay for exercising a right. That is unconstitutional, that's immoral, and it's inconsistent with the Bill of Rights. Full stop. So that is where I believe at a minimum that they will rule. Here are some other things that I believe they may even expand on and get outside their little microscopic lens that they've been looking at cases when it comes to the Second Amendment over the years. You men and women on the Supreme Court, what you need to do is you need to start taking a much broader view when it comes to these cases because they're going to keep coming to you and they're going to keep coming to you and they're going to keep coming to you. So you may as well get it out of the way now. And here's what I believe that, that, they, that they may include in there and what they should include in their ruling. First and foremost, they will have to strike down any state's limiting of one person who's a resident of one state going into another state and not being allowed to carry. That needs to stop. And what I see them ruling there is that they will have a, a uh, provision in this ruling that it will literally be full recognition of the Second Amendment when one citizen goes to another state. You cannot have a state that precludes and prevents the rights of a person in one state from being exercised in another. That is not American. That violates the Constitution very easily. If you just simply look at, at Article 4, uh, you have to look at that statement and you go ahead and read it for yourself that no state can deprive another person of, of a right or privilege of it in another. So we're looking at, at that very obviously, and that's what I believe will happen. I believe it will be full reciprocity everywhere you go to carry a firearm. So when that happens, guess what? New York. Sorry, sucks to be you, because you're going to have people coming into your state that are armed and have a God-given constitutional right to do so. Another thing I believe that they should put in the ruling is the stupidity on magazine capacity. As if some idiot leftist knows how many rounds you need to protect yourself or your family. And by the way, all these people putting these laws on the books about, oh, you can only have 10 rounds or 6 rounds or 7 or whatever arbitrary fi uh, figure that they put up there, you know, I would ask yourself, okay, what, what, what knowledge or expertise do you have on the number of rounds someone needs for a firearm, as if that number uh, is the exact same in every single self-defense situation. You know, what are you going to do if you can only have seven or ten rounds and you're facing three or four people? You think that's going to be enough in your in your in your uh, in your absolute uh, genius of, of self-defense as a guru of, of self-defense? Are you going to tell me that ten rounds going to be enough against three or four or five people? No, I think they'll get rid of the magazine capacity deal. I, I think that's one thing that they should put in there. Now, any, any restrictions, guys, on, on the carrying of firearms weakens communities, emboldens and empowers criminals, and at the, at the absolute 
primordial level violates your natural rights as a free man or woman. And, and it's so insulting when places do restrictions on this, as if you're not an adult that can make decisions uh, on your own behalf for your protection. Think about how arrogant and condescending and parental and paternalistic that those kind of laws are. I, if I lived in one of those places, and thank the Lord I, I live here in Tennessee, if I lived in, in a place like uh, you know Maryland or a place like New Jersey or, or Massachusetts, I, I would be absolutely insulted that some bureaucrat who has full-time security personnel with off-duty cops. And by the way, this gives me another thing. You police officers out there that are enforcing weapons laws, like you're a serious problem. You're a part of the problem. There's no such thing as a gun crime. There's no such thing as a weapons charge, okay? Uh, you, you, you can't just arbitrarily wave your wand and, and, and convict people or prosecute people or arrest people for carrying a firearm, which it clearly says in the Second Amendment that they're authorized and endowed and entitled to do so uh, from the very inception of this country itself and even before that. So the very fact that you people out there that are police are going to add weapons charges against somebody, the very fact you're going to arrest them for, for possessing a firearm, that's pretty wrong. You are contributing to gun control. And I would, I would charge and, and ask every single police officer out there that you uphold your oath of office, your oath of position, that you stop doing that kind of stuff. So the onslaught of, of people being armed in this country is coming and you leftist idiots, you gun control proponents out there, you're gonna have to learn how to live with that. You're gonna have to learn to accept that, that our desire and our God-given right to protect ourselves trumps your feelings, your juvenile arrested development fears, and you're going to have to live with that. That the Constitution, the Bill of Rights in this country has told us to do that for a very long time. And just because you're afraid, it does not infringe on your rights whatsoever. Your feelings are your choice. And you're either going to choose to accept it or you're going to choose to accept to be miserable. And given that your proclivity is towards misery and, and hatred of other people, and I get that. Uh, it's, it's not a concern of mine or any other free man and woman that has decided to arm themselves. That your, your feelings, I, nobody, nobody can give, personally, they could give a rat's ass about them. With that said, folks, when we're dealing with, uh, when we're dealing with rights, you know, responsibilities come with that. If you're going to carry a firearm, you better learn how to use it, and you better learn when to use it, just as importantly as that. Uh, don't be a legend in your own mind by saying you're some gunslinger that's going to go out there and deal with all the problems in society without proper instruction. Watching all the videos in the world, all the other stuff that happens, it's not going to do you much good uh, if you haven't verified and validated that. And I've had so many people come to class that have said, man, I'm really glad I came to class and got training instead of buying another gun or buying a bunch of ammo and all this stuff. And you guys need to understand that what we do out here is we take people uh, that are gun owners and turn them into armed citizens. And there's a very big difference between a gun owner and an armed citizens. And we would love to see you guys out here in one of our pistol classes. Uh, it's, it's certainly worth uh, the investment in yourself and your family's security and well-being, then uh, you will see the difference between just going to the range and plinking and actually coming out to a place that's going to instruct you properly. If you found the information in the video helpful, subscribe to the channel, follow me on social media, the link is down below. Uh, if you want further information, you can do that. I've got a pistol craft book that's available in the description box below. And if you really want to learn uh, how to use your firearm, come out to Valor Ridge and we can help you. As Reed Hendricks of Valor Ridge reminding you, the lessons that we learn are written on the tombstones of others. We'll see you on the ridge.